Thank you. So this is pertaining to Will. I'm kind of sensing that you have a very different definition than I do, and yeah. I'm kind of going through that where I've really moved away from the ego, and I feel like, what is my will? And I think I can see that I need to align it with faith, so this is great, but I'd, I'd love to hear your definition of what Can I ask is. you what yours is? Well, I knew what it used to be. It was right. very connected to my ego and, and who so I when you perceived say your myself ego, to be. Yeah, is that what you mean, ego, to mean? Yes, yeah. like who I thought I wanted to be in the world and my emotions. And when I let go of everything, I feel like I'm in a blissful state, but I have no will. So now I'm saying I need to align it with God. But I feel yeah. when I look at that, I don't know what it means. True will. bliss is not possible without will, actually. So, so a lot of people believe in the New Age teachings, they believe that they can release a desire to do anything, and in the end, they'll be at one with everything. That's not the case at all, actually. And in fact, it's the opposite of what God wants us to do. It's a very uh, intellectual way of examining true loving, a true loving condition. And I, and I can explain some of that in a minute. What you're defining as ego, see, ego historically has def been defined differently. In the, in the early stages of the development of our language, ego actually meant your nature or your character. Does that make sense? Um, and, it, and it's only come to mean dirty things, you know, like ego is not a dirty word, you know, that skyhooks. Have you ever heard skyhooks? They're an Australian band. You've got to educate yourself. There's this song that goes, ego is not a dirty word. Um, because it, actually the word ego began from this, from this concept of your individual personality and nature. Does that make sense? So from God's perspective, your ego is your individual personality and nature. Um, in other words, what God created you to be is your ego from God's perspective. But that's not now what the word means for most people. What the word means for most people is that most people do believe it means it's a dirty thing. <laughs> ego is a dirty word. And for most people now, it means their facade. You know, what they created as the image of themselves to be rather than what God created them to be. That's what most people believe it to be, the word ego. Now, if we make the assumption that that's what ego is, that this facade-based person, then obviously, yes, you're going to need to deconstruct the facade. So there are really, if you can think about it, three selves. There's this facade self, right? And then I would say to you that there's also the injured self, which we created the facade to avoid. Right? Now, often this facade was created not through just our own process, but also through the processes of our parents. You know, they wanted a certain facade. So if you look at it in any society, generally our children grow up to a large extent to be mirror images of ourselves in terms of our belief systems and so forth, because we want them to engage certain facades and not have other things that we think are, you know, that we, we have no love of. And that's to cover our injured self. That, that's the self we're trying to not feel when we create the facade or what you would probably have called before your ego, right? But there is the third self, which is the original self that God created. And that original self is the person that we need to become. Well, it's, it's better to say we're already it, but with a lot of injuries and a lot of facade on top. Does that make sense? It's sort of like you could think of it as a layer. Where there's our original self, and what we've done is over the course of our life, right from the time of, from the time of conception onwards even, there's been a lot of damage uh, you know, associated. So that's like mud that's been thrown at this pure ball, if you like, which is our original self. And then what we did because of all this mud being quite painful and we, we don't want to recognise a lot of it, we created another layer on top, which is our facade, our well, ego. And that facade is allowing us to walk around in the world in complete ignorance of the injuries most of the time and certainly in complete ignorance of what God originally created us to be. Now, what God originally created us to be is our true personality and nature. And what God wants us to do, part of what God wants us to do, is to use our will to not only rediscover it, but also then to live in it. 
And that means that we're going to have to have desires. We're going to have to have, to have passions. The only reason why those desires and passions that we might currently have are painful is because we don't get them fulfilled. And the only reason why they're not fulfilled is because in God's universe, God's universe will not fulfill any desire that's out of harmony with God's definition of love. Does everyone get that? That's a very important statement I just made. <laughs> and very important to understand. God will not fulfill your desires in the universe unless your desires are completely in harmony with love. Right? That's the if. If you do my will, you will receive. And, and there's a big if. Right? And I'm not talking about my will. That's, the, that's really what God's saying to us. If you do my will, if you do, in other words, what are the laws regarding love, if you do what's loving, you will receive. If you're not receiving, then it's because whatever is your will is being exercised out of harmony with love. Now, this original self isn't automatically loving. God created it to have the potential to be loving, but God also created it to have the potential that you could develop yourself into a very unloving person if you wanted to. And there are many people on the earth who want to. Right? So we're going to have to use our will even to want to love rather than want to do damaging things to other people. Does that make sense? Now, if we understand that the facade, or what you refer to in the past as the ego, is not the real self, but rather one of these layers around the real self, and the injuries are not even the real self. They're the layers, that's the, this layer, around the real self that people, that you lived in a world, and that world imposed a lot of its injuries upon you. Right? That also will need to disappear before you're going to discover your original self. And God wants you to discover your original self. So if you're resistive to getting, letting go of the facade, or you're resistive to letting go of your injuries, you will never become the self that God created you to be. Now, once that original self is discovered, we have the ability to make it grow, to become larger. Right? And that's also developed by our will to receive God's love. So as God's love pours into the soul, the human soul, the soul expands beyond its original capacity to understand its original capacity to love and everything. It expands beyond that. Its original capacity to understand truth expands beyond that as we receive God's love. But, but it's only our original, real, and I've used the term before, real self, right? the real person you are, that can connect to God. This injured self will struggle connecting to God because of all of our injuries. And the facade self has zero connections with God, actually, no matter how much it claims opposite. So there are many people who are in a faith, for example, on earth, who are completely in their facade, and yet when you boil it all down, you know, they're willing to go to war and hurt somebody else. They're willing to do all sorts of things in their religion, in their religious faith. Well, that's all facade. None of that's connecting to God. And it's only by going into their inner self and working out why they're so injured and then going into their original self that they'll actually ever connect to God. Does that make sense? Now, the reason why I raise all that is because our will or our free will, which is a gift that God gave to you as an individual and to every other person who's ever existed, this gift is a very beautiful gift. But you need to know how to use it because it's like a knife. All right. You use a knife in the wrong way, and what's the result? There's a lot of injuries and potential death. All right. And it's the same when we use our soul's will in the wrong direction. There is the potential for lots of harm to ourselves and to other people. And so how we use our will, our motivation and force that we have ourselves in terms of our personal power has to be brought into harmony with love before we're going to feel, fully feel the positive benefits of having free will. And all of God's laws of God's universe are there 
to try to help us see that every time we act out of harmony with God's laws of love, we are using our will to not only harm ourselves, but also harm others. And that's, I feel, what we need to learn about our ego, if you like. Now, God's definition of ego is that. <laughs> God created our real self, and that's how God sees the ego, as your real self. But for the majority of us, how we see our ego is that. Our facade that we've created after years and years and years of imagining that we're somebody that we're not. Right. Now, breaking down that facade, breaking down the ego, that's going to be hard work. Because there's the layer of facade to break off. And remember, the layer of facade was created because we wanted to avoid the injuries. And most people don't want to feel how much they are injured. Right? And so they always want to revert back to the facade. So every time we start trying to get into our injuries, there's this underlying thing going, don't go there, don't go there, you know, stay away from that. And that moves us back into the facade every single time. And what we need to do is get beyond both the facade and the injuries, and then we can discover our real self. But to get beyond it's not an intellectual process. It's not a process of numbing out to everything. It's a process of becoming super sensitive to everything. So sensitive that you become sensitive to receiving God's love. And God's love will transform your soul back to its original nature, if you can receive it. Right? And there's another big if. If you can receive it, God's love will transform your soul. The key is, how do I receive it? Right? That's the real key question that we need to ask. But you can see that this process, you could choose to do yourself without God even, couldn't you? You could choose to break down your facade. You could choose then to feel your injured self. A lot of people in New Age circles notice they have a facade. And then what they decide to do, instead of going through their injured self, which is all about experiencing, right, the negative emotions that are inside of the injured self so that they can be released. Instead of choosing to do that, most people get to about there and put a wall up and call that bliss. And that's what happens with almost every new age spirituality that I've ever examined. They try to think they've developed and think they're all blissed out, but as soon as you press one of their buttons, bang, they're back into... Either facade or yelling, screaming, they're in their injured self. Does that make sense? And that's an indication that the real injuries have yet to be released. Right? And if you've got to meditate for four hours a day to maintain that state, then it's not a real state. The reality is when you have, when you have cleared away the injured self, you will not have to meditate for one minute a day. You will be naturally loving in all circumstances, in all situations, and feel naturally calm in all circumstances and all situations without having to meditate a single moment of the day. Does that make sense? You won't have to engage yourself in a practice. The engagement of a practice is usually done to avoid the injury. Right? And if you examine, many of you have been involved in New Age type spiritual pursuits in the past, you, when you look back on those particular pursuits, you can see that a lot of the times you engage the process to avoid something, right? rather than engaging the process to, to actually feel it. Right? And it's only through the feeling of emotion that you can release it. Now, I can give you an example of that, which is a real example, and that is any child, you notice when any child falls over, it has this initial reaction of feeling the pain, having a big cry, and then sometimes, if you've let them have the cry properly, five minutes later, what are they doing? Exactly the same thing again. A lot of the times, like, they don't, there's no fear in them whatsoever about what happened. Right? Now, how did they get from that space, the place of like, feeling the pain, and then going through the pain, and then out the other side? They did it by experiencing the emotion. Now, what we learn to do, and we're often taught to do this, is we're taught to not experience the emotion. Right? Now, in the process of not experiencing the emotion, 
we can fool ourselves into thinking it no longer exists, but the reality is it gets stored into our injured experience. Your soul is like a great big storage container, storing another one, storing another one, storing another one, and every emotion you don't actually feel and release will be stored. Now, for most of us in our childhood, that means we had a lot stored because our parents many, very often shut down the experience of most emotions. So our injured self builds over our lifetime, builds, 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 into such a point that we get to the point almost where we can't even control it anymore, that how much is stored, like it just starts spilling out. And this is why, you know, oftentimes the older we get, the grumpier we get. Because our injured self is now just spilling out all the time. We can't, it's so much stored in there, some of it's got to come out sometime. So, you know, it starts coming out. And, uh, and when a person passes frequently, it just starts coming out quite, quite a lot, like where their injured self is quite, quite obvious. And the fact that your body is decaying is a sign about your injured self still having dominance. So the reality is if our bodies were... Uh, if our injured self didn't have dominance and we were in our original self, none of us would age beyond 25. All right. None of us would get fat. None of us would put on weight. None of us would get so thin that we're ema you know, emaciated. None of those things would occur. Because God created the real self to have complete control in love over both bodies, the spiritual and physical bodies. So, so, so the fact that we're even aging is, is an indication that we're not allowing ourselves to feel some of our injured self. Does that make sense? So I meet very many people who are quite aged who say, oh yes, I know this and I know that and I know this and I know that. I'm going, I'm sorry, you don't know all those things. Because if you knew all of those things, you wouldn't look 90 you would look 25, right? That's how you would look. So it's just a facade that you've got going on, thinking that you know all of these things, an intellectual process. Once you fully engage the truth from God's perspective, what you'll do is you'll go through the injured self, and as a result of letting go the causes of all of our body issues and pains and suffering and so forth, you'll get to your real self, and as that occurs, different things in your system, your body system, physically, emotionally, will all be cured. And they'll be cured permanently. And you'll get to the point eventually, whether it's on earth or in the spirit world, you'll get to the point eventually, if you engage the process, where you start engaging your real self at one with God and you feel young, vibrant, and you'll always have your will engaged. You, it will not be a numbing of your desires all of your desires will be explosive in their nature, but they'll all be in harmony with God's love, all of them. So God wants us all to learn how to use or have all of our desires, but have them all in harmony with love. So it's not a process of tuning out of desire, it's a process of understanding your desires. Initially, many of our desires are driven by our facade or our injuries, but we release so all of those things and eventually we get to the stage where all of our desires are in complete harmony with God's love. Then there's, no thing, no, there's nothing to be afraid of, is there, in that place? Because you're never going to act out of harmony with love once you're in that place. And also your physical form and your spiritual body and all those things will be perfectly in alignment. You won't have to go and get any therapy of any kind. You won't have to go to a doctor ever. You won't have injuries after injuries occurring. You won't have accidents even, actually. No one, no one in the celestial spheres has a single accident. Right? So if they were living on earth, they'd be driving a car, never have an accident. Right? And they might not be driving a car, of course, either. But uh, they'll never have an accident. And that's the beauty of the universe God's created us. Now, obviously, at the start of the process, we don't have faith in any of what, of what I've just said, generally. And this is why we need to start building one upon the other. Yeah. Does that help answer your question? Excellent. Yeah. Very comprehensive answer. <laughs> 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 <laughs>